other things. Um, good. So uh, even though the talk is called Advanced Component Patterns, uh, I'm going to start it off very simple and low, right? And then we're going to build up from there to some fancy stuff, right? And to all the like the React hipster people, yes, we are going to talk about render props. <coughs> we just have to wait for it. All right. So I'm Siddharth. Uh, I do open source stuff sometimes. I also teach React, so if that's something that you're interested in, find me later. Uh, so the interesting part, and we've like talked about this a lot today, which is the interesting part about React is that it's a really tiny API. Right? It's pretty small. But the React community is, makes, makes it like super huge ecosystem. Right? And there's like something new happening in the ecosystem every day. Especially if you're like active on like things like Twitter or Reddit, right? So I'm like incredibly online and it's, it's not a good thing, but you kind of get to see a lot of different patterns emerge every day. And right? so I have this like fear of missing out. So I'm like, I must learn all the React patterns. I can't, you know, I have to know the best way of doing something. Uh, so, so I did, right? I, I learned all of the patterns until yesterday, right? Of course, something new is, all, has already come out while we're sitting here and you don't know that. But until yesterday, I'm going to give you everything that's going on, right? Cool. So there are seven component patterns that I'm going to talk about. We started off very simply. So there's some context. I work for this company called Auth0. Um, la la la, they make stuff for developers, use by a lot. They have a React story going on. Right. I work in this team which has both designers and developers, right? So I kind of work in the middle of this, right? We have a like whole engineering team, we have a design team. My team kind of works in the middle of this, right? And it's a really interesting space because I, I kind of like doing both. So we do this thing where we take inventory of our application. We have like these pretty forms, buttons, all those things. Um, I'm sorry, you can't see some of the fancy gray borders, you know, like designers. Uh, <coughs> But what we do is we kind of figure out what are the repeating patterns across the application <coughs> and we try to build it once so that other people who are not so design friendly don't have to do it all over again, right? Uh, fancy way of saying we, we make buttons so that all of the other people don't have to make buttons, they can just use our button. Right? The other interesting point about this team is that so my manager is actually a designer, right? How many of you like working with designers, right? Like as a peer, just raise a hand. Wow, that's like barely 10% of the room, right? So imagine this, this is like a fun thing. I, I report to a designer, right? So it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, but I kid, like this guy, this guy, uh, I, I'll repeat his name multiple times. Like, he's called Fernando, because he's like Spanish and stuff, but like I just call him Fur, because it's smaller. So yeah, Fur is pretty cool, right? He's a pretty chilled out guy. He gets coding as well, so that's cool. So for, we, we started working on this project. Fur said that, you know, everyone uses input boxes. We need one of those. <laughs> That's a cool, let's add it, input box, I know what to do. I'm going to like create a component, which is like, it takes some props, but it, what it really does is just spits out some JSX, right, this HTML JavaScript thing, and then you render it, you say text input, and you can pass on placeholder, other things like that, right? And for this, for simplicity, we're going to say it uses class names to style things, it has a class name of input, right? Simple enough. All right, Nasrallah comes back and says, you know, we also have some read-only things, right? How should people use that? So we go back and we say, okay, how do we want people to use read-only, right? Our API has to be like nice and pretty. So we say, let read-only be a prop, right? If somebody gives me read-only as a prop, uh, I'm going to like configure the class names and say like, if props dot read-only exists, if it's a, the Boolean is true, also add class name read-only, right? Um, so this is kind of how it works. Also, just for good measure, you also pass read-only so that HTML can do its thing. This is known as a functional component. It's, a, it's essentially a function which returns some JSX, right? This is what React folks call the functional component, right? So just to get like a feel of the room um, as to how should I paste this talk, how many of you folks already work with React? Like just to raise a hand. Awesome. Um, just to like, it's really dark, so I have to like really focus. How many of you people don't work with React? All right, cool, got it. Uh, how many of you would consider being an advanced in React? All right, good. Okay, now I know what to do. Cool, so I get functional components. Everyone's happy, let's move on. Right, so Fer comes back and he says, uh, there are some fancy UI where while you type stuff, we also need to show like this label. I know how many characters have you typed. I'm like, cool, okay, we basically need some state thingy going on. 
So let me add a span which shows how many characters, zero characters, and to make it handle state, I have to now switch it from a functional component to a class component. Right? Class is where you have state and constructor and all of that. So I'm going to do that. I have to use this dot props now. I can't use props. And then I add a constructor, which I start with length is just like zero to begin with. Um, instead of saying zero cars, I replace it with this dot state dot length. And then I have to add an on change, right? And bind it with the input box. So that when change happens, this function gets called and it says, just set the state of, in the state set length as event.target.value.length, right? Which what it's doing is as you type, it just reads how many, what is the length of the string you've typed and puts it into state, right? So this keeps going on and then state.length updates, it works, it's cool. Uh, I hope you guys can read the code part of it, right? Um, the UI is okay, it's just like pretty gray boxes, doesn't really matter. Right, so you type, it changes, and cool. So this is a class component, right? It's not a function, it's a class. You get to attach some events like on change. Moving on. Uh, this is something that really like grinds my bones, right? This this bind thing that we have to do, no matter how many times I see this, right? I always forget to add this, right? And I know it why it exists, it's important, you know, this and prototype and JavaScript, you have to pass it. I, I don't really care, right? I just want to do something which seems obvious. Luckily, we can kind of get rid of this. We can just say this dot on change. And instead of saying on change as a this kind of like a bracket function, you can change it to an arrow function, right? If it's an on change is equal to event slash arrow, right? And this is like the ES6 arrow function. The fun part is ES6 arrow functions handle this differently. They don't really care about prototypal inheritance and all of that. So they just ignore this, right? So you don't have to do the bind nonsense. But this looks weird, right? This is not how class functions are supposed to be. This is kind of awkward. Uh, the fun thing is this, this is like a new syntax and you can use it. Uh, another thing that you can do with this is instead of writing all of this boilerplate super props, right? This is also something I always forget. I add a constructor, I forget to call super, I just write my state and then React gives me a warning and I'm like, oh yes, for the thousandth time, super props, right? And if we have to do this every time, why are we even doing this? Why is this not automated already? So with this new syntaxy thing, you can also do this. You can just say state is equal to whatever the initial state is, you don't have to do super constructor all of that jazz. Right, so it looks pretty, it fits in my slide. Earlier it wasn't even fitting, right? Now it fits in my slide, that's the most important thing. Uh, so people call this the class properties transform. Right? So these are like additional uh, proposal to how JavaScript classes should behave. And you can like get a Babel plugin, you can use it. Good for us that create React app already has this in build. Right? So most of us never really have to worry, we can just start using this nice syntax. Okay, so people people have different names for this. Some people call this uh, ES7 classes, some people call it ES next classes. Right? It, it's not in the official spec yet, it's still a proposal. That's why we're doing all of this Babel magic. Right? Uh, but then it's like a ES something, ES next class. Cool. All right, so coming back to this text component, right? So of course, Perl comes back, Perl's a designer, that's what they do. He says, I like this thing which we have on top, right? This looks like form labels. We always need labels, right? So let's create this email label and thing going on, right? And then he then he gives me like an interesting thing, which is <coughs> emails are supposed to be lowercase always, right? I, I'm not sure if that's true, but in this situation, hypothetically, emails are always lowercase. But people are going to type what they're going to type, right? You can't control people. So the, when they type uppercase, we should convert it to lowercase, right? And you've seen this in places that, that people say only caps lock is allowed, like sorry, only capitalized letters are allowed, block letters, and you type small letters, they automatically convert it for you so that you don't have to do all of that nonsense. This is something that we wanted to do. When you type big, you're going to make it small. So th this is our input component, right, that we were playing with. This component that has an input and it basically just renders the input thing. This is known as an uncontrolled component. Right? React doesn't really control any of its content, right? The HTML DOM does. When you type something, it's H it's the browser's responsibility to render it into your input component, like actually paint it into the component on key press. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little sick, so I'm gonna keep coughing the entire time. 
so if we want to control this input we need to make it a controlled component right <coughs> all right how we do that is that we say state right we need we need to control it we have a state for the input box we say state initial value is just an empty text and instead of html or more like the browser controlling the value we going to say value is this dot state dot value i now we control the value the state controls the value the funny thing that happens here is if you try to type something now react is going to get rid of it right because the moment the browser adds it react is going to say no state value is still blank i'm going to reset it poof you type it react makes it go away right so if you want a control thing you kind of also have to add your own on change which sets the state and renders the actual element right So this is a good case for us because what we really want to do is this right we want to say whatever you type i don't care i'm going to to lower case it and then set it as a value right so this is a controlled component that's i think the third or fourth component pattern i'm going to fast and i'm going to slow down good so that's the fourth component pattern so if you want to play around with inputs forms that kind of a thing where you want to control the behavior of them not just leave it to the dom what you need is a control component you control the state state sets the value and then you handle whatever you want on on change so when somebody types this it becomes small you get the do all right for comes back for is very active for says i like what this label thing is going on right we need the same label on like address this thing like text areas as well right well, okay this, this seems like a repeating pattern right we're going to use this label on everything like every input type is going to have a label we have select we have switches all of those things will have the same label we should probably like make it generic enough so what we do is we we can do this thing called like a wrap it in this function thing right where i'm saying the in internal component is still the same but i'm saying render it with label and then i'm mentioning what should be my label name in in quotes right so i'm giving it as a parameter Uh, how this works is you say you actually declare like a function function which takes two parameter the label and a component and in this basically i'm saying i have a form field i have the label i put the label name from the the parameter and then i just render the same component right? so i don't really care in this case what is the component you can give me a text area you can give me your input select box whatever you can give me like a button i don't care i'm just going to render it blindly right so this this pattern where you take a component as a parameter and then add things to it and then return jsx again right which is kind of like returning other the component is known as higher order component right these were all the rage last year and now nobody likes them right um, this is just like the javascript world where we we keep we like it's like we we adopt a new puppy every year right and the puppy is cute and we love it and we take it everywhere and we show it to all our friends <coughs> but then time goes by people use the puppy in like weird ways that right? they feed it too much they use it take it everywhere and now the puppy is like ugly it's like one hand is broken it's fat cuz everyone's feeding it and now we don't really like the puppy anymore like, it's like a dog now dogs are not cute puppies are cute so then we we basically go and and get another puppy and forget about this this is what happened to higher order component anywho they great this still great they pretty useful so another way of using this is instead of saying with label as a function you can also create with label as a component you can say i'm going to wrap this in a more component like a jsx form so i say with label and label address is the prop and i'm literally just wrapping nesting the internal component over here how the code changes is instead of doing all of that we just say with label is now a functional component it takes props and it renders the label which should be props dot label and then after that it just renders props dot children right so again the children part is just transparently rendered you can put a text area or text import select box doesn't matter props dot children that one line is going to render everything in between over there so these are like two flavors of higher order component uh, which are pretty useful right for repeatable patterns okay right. so now now for is like okay cool we're getting somewhere right we have the switch switch the label works thankfully we have like a generic higher order component then like we also have this like form 
everywhere which has like a save changes and a clear button we have like nice border in between right and this is like this is like a pretty strong pattern right um so how do we tackle this the first thing like let's just try to render how we would do it in, in like the normal what we have to now so you put a form inside the form you say with label address let me just show this back right we have email address and then like a switch thing <laughs> and then button so we, we render like a form inside the form we say with label address put the text input we say with label address and put the text area like a big one then we put a label with the accept and put the switch right and then we put like two buttons inside like a div with a class actions so that we can have the nice border and then so, so this works right like you put two buttons one is primary one is normal this kind of works but if you see you still have to write a lot of code right how can we make this simpler after all what we want to do is for people to make forms the same way like everyone when they want to form they should create a form that looks the same that like the entire company that's effectively what my team does um, but if we if we do it like this it's prone to mistakes it's prone to creativity it's it's not as rigid right or easy so what we do instead is we start abstracting things out right we, we try to like compose them nicely so what you do is you you have a form which is one react component and then you have form dot text input Right. The the fun part this this is something that I recently came to know is that you can actually have components attached to other components. Right. So because form is like a React component is still a JavaScript object and you can add keys to it. So you can say form dot text form dot text input and this text input is like your own text input component which has the label in built. Right. So you don't have to do with label stuff. You can just pass label as a prop and internally you can do all of those things. uh similar you can have form dot actions they say this is the primary this is the secondary notice you don't even care about the color and stuff you just say i have two actions this is the main one this is the secondary one and then the system the design system takes care of which color what is the alignment etc right so this is known as the compound component this is my favorite of all the patterns cuz it's so powerful and it's still so easy to use on the surface so let's see how how do you how does the code for this look like So first of all, you have the form. Form is just like a stupid form. It's like form HTML, and it renders everything that comes in inside it, right? So this props or children. For this form or text input, what we do is we say <coughs> form or text input is props return in JSX. It's a React component, and inside it we say with label, right? So even though you asked for a text input, when you say form or text input, we assume that you're using it in a form. you also need a label and we take that label name from the props so props dot label placeholder all of that same goes for the text area text area becomes with label then a normal text area so the api looks like this but it gives you all of these same thing goes for action right you look through or you want like you look at what's the primary if there is a secondary and you put a button primary and you put a button normal secondary whatever right so yeah just writing this much code generates this out for you and there are a key like some key things that i want you to notice right? it's how um, everything is like all the inputs are supposed to be aligned you have your labels on the left side you have this border thing going on the save changes is not aligned to the label it's aligned to the input right these are all design decisions that are baked into the form but when you look at the api you're not really thinking about the alignment you're just thinking about what input do i need from the user right and this is the real power of compound components they hide all of the decisions behind them so that people who don't have to care shouldn't have to care okay another fun thing about this is you can actually change the underlying design without changing the api right so over here you see text input when you say label comes with it in the future we can and we we kind of are going to do this is we want the labels on top we don't like them on the left we want them on the top the fun part is we can change the underlying definition and roll it out to people and they don't have to change their code but they get the new design right so these kind of things are very powerful because the like god knows how difficult it is, it is to roll out design changes to all of your applications at the same time like keeping them consistent this is a pretty good way of doing this 
All right, back to this comment. Then. Remember this one, with the one with counted characters? Uh, I'm going to put it on the right because I don't like it on the left, right? And Fur is not here to stop me, so I'm going to do what I want. It's on the right now, all right? So a few people started using this and they use it for a project name, right? They have a form which asks for the project name. So they have this nice label. And what they do is they have a character limit on this. So when you type like really long, it gives you like after a time, this character count becomes red, right? It's how a lot of like counters work, right? Twitter works the same way. It starts showing you like the red thing that you can't enter so many things. So they were like, like can we do this? Right? I'm like, sure, like, seems reasonable, right? And seems pretty easy too. What I can actually just do is, inside my on change, I can just add like a new error state, which says, if the length is greater than 30, it's an error, right? And then pass it, add it to the state, and then change the class name or whatever, use some style, right? Basically, I can have logic in my component. You know, like, fine, I can take care of this. To make it generic, I can say, let's not do 30, let's say props.limit, right? Different fields might have different limits. How you use this is you say text input, limit is 30, right? And now it works, it, it seems pretty good. Um, next, they came up with this thing and they're like, we're optimizing the UI, right? Now, now we have more time, we're going more UX practices. So when you type a lot of characters, but not 30 yet, we show this 28 characters, but it's orange. Oh, it is orange on the screen, yeah. So we show this like orange, which is like warning state, it's not error yet. Right? So before 25, it's all like green or black, like normal state. 25 to 30, it's orange. And after that, it becomes red as an error, right? But like, can you do that for us, right? I'm like, yeah, I can, I can add, like, what, what, what am I going to do, right? I'm going to say error limit or warning limit, take two params, do all of that logic in the code, right? And then I'm like, but this is not what a text input is supposed to do, right? Your app has like a very custom logic. Nobody's app has the same thing, right? Nobody else needs this yet. So we shouldn't actually have it in the text input. Um, so we broke away from this pattern and said, you know what, you would take care of your own label, right? You guys want to do goofy things. I'll give you a function, right? You just pass like a function which renders the label and I'll just call your function, right? And you can do whatever you want. And as long as it returns JSX, we're cool, right? If, if it's like JSX, I can render in React, I'm happy. So I'm gonna pass you the length, and you can like render the length as is, or you can do fanciness with it, it's your call. I'm just gonna give you length, give me JSX. This is called a render prop, right? The basic idea is that you're passing the control of rendering stuff to the user, right? Not the component itself, but to the user who uses the component. So you take a prop, which is the render prop, and you call it so that it returns you JSX, which you insert, which is supposed to be rendered, right? So this is like a super powerful pattern where you want to control state, but you don't want to control presentation, right? You want to pass off the presentation to the user. Let's see how does this look. Yeah, this is the, this is the example of their render label. They said, uh, we have this, we, we're going to have two class names, 25 is one, 30 is error, we're going to attach class name to the span. I don't really care, do whatever you want in your rendered label. How we take care of this is this, right? So instead of our span, the label that was putting the length, we literally call that function. We say this dot props dot render label function, right? And we pass length. We pass this dot state dot length. Right? And because like inside of JSX, or inside of like React component JSX, you can actually call functions just wrapping them in curly braces, right? You can actually call an external function, internal function, accept it as a prop. It's pretty powerful, right? So yeah, this is what we do. We say, we're going to call your function, give us what you want. You can actually take this to the next level as well, where you say, we've created a text counter method, right? Which only counts the amount of characters that you enter. Now you decide what you want to render, right? So we just accept one prop, which is render, which is a function, right? And then we're gonna give you back the length. And then you decide if you wanna make the input also red, input yellow, like go crazy, right? Do whatever you want, give us yes. <clears throat> so this is render prop, right? And this, this is getting pretty popular. This is kind of the new puppy instead of high order components. It's pretty powerful. You can see like it, it kind of lets you do a lot of things. Uh, React Router is kind of using this already. So if you use React Router 4, this is in your production code base already. A uh, bunch of other people have started adopting it. It, it seems to make sense. All right. 
so so now this is the best one for once like I, i'm fairly new to the company so i don't know everything that's going on uh, he comes to me one day and says sit i'm going to show you like a new product right i'm going to look fun like we're doing cool things right and he shows me this right and he says this is like a parallel project so we're doing like a different branding because it's going to be like a side product of its own right we might keep it in the company we might like make a sister company and sell it like they basically break it into two companies right i'm like all oh, that sounds cool but this thing has blue buttons you don't have blue buttons you have black buttons right you have this so i'm not this right they have like weird thing the switch is not green the switch is blue you don't have gray buttons you have white buttons or for you both of them are white but one has a border right and the color is different right? so to be honest it's not that big a deal it's like just a theming thing right the colors have changed and like some of the borders have changed but it's it's still like a theming problem so so we went back to our conference looked at them hard and we like okay what what can we change right so we have this form um i can accept a theme in every component right like the button component give it a theme uh the black product is called manage so you give me a theme manage i'm going to render it black if you give me theme extend i'm going to use the blue right so just give me the which theme you want i can do it but then you have to do it for every component or at least every themeable component right like input box doesn't care but the switch cares the button cares so you kind of have to know which to pass and where to pass this is obviously not it makes sense for me but this is not what i want people to have to do all the time right it's kind of painful so the ideal solution in this case would be to just do a, like go to your top most element like the app component and wrap it with a theme provider right so you would give you wrap your entire application in a theme provider component and just put the theme name once and what should what this should do is <coughs> pass this in, pass this information to all of the components that are inside the app right <coughs> and then theme them accordingly <coughs> all right so so this is like pretty cool for people who want to use right you just have to do this once depending on the product you're working on you say theme is managed theme is extend you forget about it the system takes care of it let's see how this works right and this is like so first of all like let me just say this is the provider pattern okay right? provider part now right? you might have seen this with react router redux right any theming like style component theming glamour all of them have a theming thing going on right so this is how you kind of use i think redux is the most popular one here so this is how you use redux as well right you have like i think you have a store provider right i'm sorry my redux is like weak um so yeah, you have like a store provider which you wrap in the app and then wherever you need the store you can have it and the the fun part about this is it it uses this thing called context right so this is from the react docs in some cases you want to pass data through the component tree without having to pass the props down manually at every level this is exactly our use case you can do this directly in react with the powerful context api right and i know like half of you are already making faces like context you shouldn't use context right we're going to bring pitch folks and like burn you to the ground they said don't use context right Like, yes yes they said don't use context right and believe it or not the docs actually define what context is and then they have a section called why not to use context right i'm sorry what does that mean you got five more minutes oh, cool. that's enough right yeah so we're going <coughs> to address all of these points super fast right and justify why context is the solution here um vast majority of applications do not need to use context none of our applications will only the central library so that none of the others have to use it cool if you aren't familiar with state management libraries la 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 i kind of am for many applications these might be the solution use redux if you can we can't really have a state management opinion in the component library because we're dealing with design right we don't want to impose that everyone should use redux we just want to give you pretty buttons so we we know what to do if you aren't an experienced react developer you don't use context this is called advanced react component docs i'm going to do this right if you this is this is the best one they have like they really try to scare you 
If you want your application to be stable, don't use context. It is an experimental API and it is likely to break in future releases of React, right? Half of the crowd is like, this guy is crazy, he doesn't know what he's doing. The interesting part to notice is, they don't say the feature is experimental, they say the API is experimental, right? So they're going to change how, how you can use it, the API of it, but context as a feature is going to stick around. And uh, you can actually go to React, the, uh, what do you say, the parent repo of it, they now have a uh, proposals repo. Uh, Andrew Clark who works on Fiber and all of those things, he's actually working on a new proposal for context, where the API is completely different, but the feature still remains. So context is gonna live, the API is gonna break. So we, we'll have to do some refactoring eventually. Cool, we, we got this, we understand, we are aware of this. If you still insist on using context, despite these warnings, try to isolate your context so that when the API changes, you only have to change it in one place, it's easier. Thanks for the advice, we're gonna take right? By the way, Redux, Mobex, Style Components, all of them use context, context, so all of your applications are already like unstable and like vulnerable to break in the future, so like, something, I'm not allowed to spare. This is a recorded session. All right, so in the theme provider, right? Quickly, how does the theme provider work? Is first of all, we define theme providers as a React component, uh, it, it basically just renders this dot children, everything that is inside it. Now to add context, we add this, we say get child context is theme is this dot props dot name, right? The name you pass gets set as a theme. <coughs> React is a little picky about the types here, they want, we, want you to strictly type this, uh, type context. So you also have to say child context types, theme is a string, right? You say prop type dot string. Cool. So this establishes the context in your entire application. To use the context, what you do is only in the components where you actually need it, you go there and you say button dot context types is theme prop types of string. So here you're declaring an explicit dependency saying button wants context types, just the theme, nothing else goes there. Only the theme one gets here, it needs to match the type, otherwise bad things happen. And voila, you get, in addition to props, you get another parameter, context, in your app, in your button. And now you can use this context to like style it because now you have the theme. So you can do this for every component that needs it, right? We don't have to go in all of our app, like switch, button, only the things that need this, we can add them. There is one thing that I did wrong here, right? Which is, oh, first let me like <coughs> demo it, like it's a fake demo, but it's a demo. So when you change the theme, these two components to toggle, right? They said, try to limit it only one place because when it breaks, it should be easy to change, right? So let's go back and instead of saying button.context types, let's create a function which adds the context, right? And this function, I'm going to like extract it and put it in the, only in the theme provider file so that all of my context magic happens in one, one file. So in this uh, component, I, I request I accept the component as a parameter and I say component or like context type of component is theme. Right? Every component that I get here, I only need to do this. <coughs> so even if the context API changes, our add context function doesn't have to change. Only this one file, we need to kind of tweak it around to whatever the new API is. Right? So it's fairly easy. It'll probably like take like a day, but we get this whole fancy feature, right? So this is the provider pattern. And yeah, now I'm gonna like tick it because we, we followed your advice and we're pretty cool with the API changes to come. So these were the seven component patterns. I hope you learned something new today that you can use in your applications. I'm Siddharth, follow me on like the bird social network and stuff. Thank you. <laughs>